Hey, y'all, welcome back to Reddit The Wire. Well, it was a tough weekend at the spa, to be sure. But life does go on, and we got to move forward. So Wednesday's card has a stakes race. It's the Johnstone Mile, and it's a pretty good one. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so the Johnstone Mile is a one-mile race run on the dirt for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares, state bred or New York bred. And if you look at the configuration, you'll note it's more of a turn and a half as opposed to two turns because it's run out of a chute. Uh, so that may benefit some of the horses who uh, who like to be on the front end and, ha and have early speed. They can carry it maybe a little longer than perhaps with two turns. Number one is Venti Valentine. Uh, this one showed some promise at uh, two and into three, but after the Kentucky Oaks uh, seemed to cool off a fair amount, um, I would say that this one is starting to round back into form. Um, you note that she's run at the New York bred stakes level before and, and did okay. Uh, but the last couple of races since debuting at four, it's a little bit of a concern that she didn't uh, pump, uh, pop a, a career high buyer or something near to it. But she didn't do too bad in the critical eye. Uh, the next start, she improved off of that. And you always want to see that, of course, in an option 80. So I would say this one's on the upswing and on the road back. It'll be interesting to see uh, how they position her, whether it be rating off of uh, off of the speed, or we'll talk about in a second, or they just try to uh, take it on the front end. Either way, I think this one is rather interesting, and I think you got another move forward possible here. So um, it'll be all about the trip for sure. But uh, I think this one maybe has a chance. I, I'm thinking more under, but, um, but I, I think there's some things to like here for sure. Number two is Sunset Louise. Uh, she hadn't done anything wrong. Um, you see she's got the Holy Bull running lines, all ones. You know, that's what she does. She gets to the lead and gone. Now, the, the, it, the last race was only three horses, and it had came off the turf, but she did what she does. She got on the lead, and there was never a doubt about it. It was pretty much all over and uh, geared down. So maybe she would have got a little bit of better buyer than that. But at four years old, she's... Um, you know, she's clearly at the top of her game, and she's only getting better. I would expect that uh, this mile distance won't be a problem for her. Uh, and, in fact, it'll be a big advantage only having the, the turn and a half as opposed to two. Uh, so she should be able to marshal her speed with no problem. Uh, she's going to have to hold off a, a couple of pretty good contenders here, but she's more than capable of doing it. Uh, she's a win candidate and an absolute use. Uh, know it all, Audrey is trained by Oscar Barrera the third, and, and his barn is just ice cold, and they have been for a while. They were at Belmont as well. Uh, this one is, in, you know, has demonstrated in the past that uh, she might have some figures that uh, would be competitive here, but the last couple really haven't been very good, and now she's going to uh, be head to head with a horse who's in top form who wants to do the exact same thing and is to her inside. So I think there's a lot of disadvantages uh, to this one, and I find it kind of hard to use after the last couple of races, and uh, I think she's a pass. Number four is Bustin' Bay. This is just a hard knocker. you got to love horses like this. Just gives an honest effort every single time by Bustin' Stone's great New York sire. Uh, trained by Linda Rice, her barn uh, speaks for itself this meet, but it is cooling off a little bit, and uh, I think she's running out of conditions for some of these horses. We're starting to see him uh, start to run twice, and uh, this is Bustin' Bay is no exception. He won on the first, She won on the first day. Uh, the very first race, as a matter of fact, an optional claimer. And it was at a mile and an eighth, and that's kind of out of her wheelhouse. And really no horse in the race wanted the distance. Uh, but she did uh, find a way to get up at the wire. And uh, I don't know where she found that extra burst at the end, but she did. Uh, it just speaks to her competitiveness. Now, buyer-wise, she's pretty light in comparison uh, to those others. And she's five years old, so I'm not sure we can expect... Uh, a big upswing that would put her in the mix. But she's awful competitive, and I think you have to use her underneath because she just loves to fight and loves to uh, loves to be in the mix. Six to one, you're getting a pretty good price, too. 
Her stable mate, number five, Betsy Blue. Uh, this one is another hard knocker. Just is a win machine. Just loves to compete. You see, she's been in the money 20 out of 23 starts. Uh, just a, you know, a great horse and just one you, you always love to watch run. Now, she'd had a bit of a layoff, and even so, she ran a really good race in the uh, Dancing Renee. Uh, didn't have quite enough at the end, but that wouldn't be much of a surprise because she'd been off such a long layoff. A lot of times Linda Rice likes to give him one to get ready. But if that's any indication of her not being on her best, uh, she should fully be there here. And I'm expecting a top effort. This is an absolute win candidate. The one thing, though, is she is cross-entered for a stakes race on Friday and against many of the same she just ran against. So the question will be... Uh, which field that Linda Rice determines is the best. I have a feeling this might be the one. <coughs> so there's a potential scratch here. So you just be on the lookout for that. But this is a win candidate. Uh, timeless Journey. Uh, three back in the career high buyer in the top flight invitational at Aqueduct. And really hasn't been doing very much running since. Uh, has been in the money, but or right around it. But you see the real dip in buyers. And I just wonder if that's a product of a bounce. Sometimes it takes a ho horses a couple of starts to rebound from a really big effort. So <clears throat> at six years old, that would be a big surprise. It's had a freshening, and that certainly will help. But uh, coming off the layoff, Ray Handel's only 8% with 61 to 180 off. And... His barn's been doing pretty well at this meet, but not enough that I would just blanketly say that this one would be a competitor. Uh, he's been doing really well with Joel Rosario. That's certainly going to help. And this one's coming from off the pace, and that's what Joel likes to do. So uh, you have some possibility there. But I kind of have a feeling I want to wait one, and I, I think uh, I just have a feeling this one's going to be a little short. Mia Be a Star is a, a dead closer. And uh, she'll have pace to run to here. The, a lot of the running is going to be done on the front end in this race. Uh, but if you look at her lifetime start, she's got 49, 5 wins, 11 seconds, 10 thirds. That's what this horse likes to do. Um, he comes from behind and, and gets into the money. Uh, so for betting purposes, yes, use under. But uh, buyer-wise, this one's pretty light. And I wouldn't expect this one to be a win candidate. So here's our top five for the Johnstone Mile. Number one, we're going to go with Betsy Blue. I think she's got a race under her belt. She should be coming into this in top form. And uh, the mile distance isn't going to bother me. It's a one and a turn and a half. Shouldn't be a problem for a horse who loves to win and compete. Uh, I think she's a logical win candidate. Number two is Venti Valentine. A bit of a wild card. Has been showing hints she's returning to her uh, prior good form at two and three. And uh, if she does come back to that, I think that she would definitely be a really strong competitor in here. Uh, so, But she doesn't need another move forward, but it's entirely possible. She'll be sitting right off the Sunset Louise. And uh, if she gets the trip, she has a chance. Number three is Sunset Louise. Uh, she, we know what she's going to do. She's going to get to the lead and try to hold it. She's more than capable of doing that. The waters are a little deep here, but uh, she's proven time and again uh, that she can respond. And uh, I think uh, probably can, I, I like Betsy Blue uh, and Betty Valentine a little better. But this one, uh, I think, definitely has the grit uh, to hang on into the exotics. And under the right circumstances, can win it. Number four is Bustin' Bay. Uh, it's just a hard knocker. Uh, loves to compete. A little over her head here, I think. But uh, just that grittiness and competitiveness, I think, can keep in the mix. And then number five, finally, we're going to go with Mia Be a Star. She's really the only late runner in the race. And I think for that reason, uh, she'll be coming late. That's what she does. She gets up into the exotics quite often. And for those purposes, at 20 to 1, I think she's a logical use. So that's the top five for the Johnstone Mile. I think it's going to be a really good race. We'll have to wait and see what Betsy Blue does, whether she runs in uh, this one or scratches out and runs in Friday. Either way, I think it's a great race. 
Um, and, you know, it's a pretty deep one, too. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing it and hope you are as well. If you do like content like this, you can go on over to our website, redditthewire.com, where we've got plenty of Saratoga coverage. We've got two-year-old analysis, daily plays, and full card analysis for the weekend. So go on over there and take a look. If you like the content you see here, of course, please like and subscribe. And we've had a bit of a spike lately in subscribers, and I want to thank you all for coming on board, and welcome to the community. Look forward to having you through our journey uh, through the thoroughbred racing season. So that's it for today. We will continue with our daily stakes plays, and of course, as the major weekend events come unfold, we will uh, have coverage for that as well. So be be on the lookout for that. And uh, so I'll be talking to you in the, in the near future, and until then, be well.